Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the fourth video in the Sudoku Android um, in Kotlin tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about um, creating some of our board backend. So I think in the last video, we created this Sudoku game backend, which will handle you know our selected row, selected column type of stuff. But in this video, we're actually going to um, create some sort of board backend that stores the state of our board, and then we'll display it onto the actual Sudoku board view. So to do this, let's just get right into it, I guess. Um, we're going to create two new classes in our Sudoku, in our game package, uh, the first of them being um, a cell. So basically, this class is just, its entire purpose is to store um, the information about a specific cell. So basically, what this means is it's going to have a row, which is an integer, a column, which is also an integer, um, a value, also an integer. And then we're also going to add this um, is starting boolean which will be false um actually i guess we can add that later since in this video we're not going to talk about starting cells so for now just make your class a cell with a row a column and a value okay and then the next thing we need is we need a board class so this is going to store the entire board um, and this is also just another class and board is going to take um it's going to have a size integer um Actually, hold on. So go back to the cell class. Make sure you put val in front of all of these. Um, val, and then bar in front of this. So basically, that we store them in the class instead of just passing the constructor and then doing nothing with them. So we go to this board again. Make the val, make the size val. Um, we'll make um, we'll make a cells, uh, which is a list of cells. And then we also have, that's it, that's it for now. So yeah, this is gonna change a little bit in the future. But basically what we want to do is allow um, the programmer to get a specific cell based on a row and a column. So we'll just write a function called get cell, which takes a row and a column. And basically, since we stored the cells, you, you could store this in a 2D array, but I didn't really wanna do that. So it's really just an easy transformation. Um, it should be cells, and then it is, um, let's see, it's row times size plus column. Okay, so basically we're storing in row, I think it's called row major order, which basically means that like the first row goes first and then the second row is the next set of elements and then the third row, and then it's, so it's just in a one dimensional setting, but um, it lets us, um, we can access it very easily. Okay, so let's see. Okay, now in our Sudoku game, we also need to have, um, a val in here and this will be the sudoku board so this will be board board equals board okay and um let's see it takes cells and it takes size so let's actually go um down here and we're actually going to create the board in here because um, so basically, we need um, a list of cells. We'll, we'll just define this as a list of size 9 times 9. And then we can generate it with a lambda function. Um, so for now, I'll just do, let's see, i mod 9. Okay, so each cell, sorry, this should be um, a cell with um, the row being. The row would be i divided by 9, the column would be i mod 9, and then we'll also do the value for i mod 9. So basically each row, or each column is going to go, um, or sorry, each cell, like, so each row is going to go from 1 to 9 along the columns. Um, yeah. And then what else do we need for our board? We need a size. That's it. Okay. So basically we're just going to say board is equal to board. Um, and then nine with cells. We're gonna change this later so that we can load it from memory, or sorry, from storage or something like that, or just, we're gonna change that later, but for now we're just gonna put this in like this. Okay, and then last thing we need here is um, cells live data, and this is gonna be a mutable live data, and it's just gonna be, um, it's gonna be a list of cells. Sorry, mutable live data. So again, when we update our our board cells, we're going to say, okay, push this back out, and then um, the play, play Sudoku activity will listen to that and then make the change as necessary. Okay, so now we also need one more function, and this will be um, 
I think one more function, we'll see. A handle input. So um, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take a number that we put in and decide what to do with it. So basically if the selected row is negative one or the selected column is negative one, we don't really wanna do anything with this. So we can just return because this handle input is gonna happen when we basically tap one of those buttons and then it's gonna say handle input and try to put it into the board state. So we'll do board, board dot, um, let's see, get cell, uh, selected row, selected column, and then we're just gonna do dot value equals number. And then what we wanna do is we wanna do cells live data dot post value, and we're gonna put in board dot cells. So basically what happens here is we get the correct cell that is selected, and then we're gonna update it and then post that value back. So basically we have this persistent layer in the background that isn't seen, and then just the cells are posted to the front. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's all we need to do in the Sudoku game class. We'll see if um, that changes. Now let's go to this uh, play Sudoku activity, and we're gonna add another um, observer in here. So it's gonna be view model dot Sudoku game dot cells live data dot observe and then this and then observer capital with um, those braces and then we'll just do update cells and then it and then we create our new function here update cells and this is going to take a list of cells that is nullable and what we do is we do cells um, question mark let so this block only runs again if um, this cells is not null because we only want to do it if it's not null and then what we want to do, just make sure you import that also. What we want to do is a Sudoku board view dot update cells and then pass in cells. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, yeah, so we need to go to Sudoku board view now and create another function. And this function will be um, update cells. And it's going to take a list of cells. And it's going to say this dot cells equals cells, and then it's going to say um, make sure you alt enter to import that. Maybe I have to hover over it and alt enter. There we go. And then we're going to do invalidate, so it will redraw the cells. So this means we have to change the way that we are um, actually drawing our cells right now. Um, so we're going to do that by um, we'll just store our list of cells in here, and it could be null, so we just start it off with null. So this should work now. It should put cells into cells, and then we need to change our drawing mechanics so that we do this correctly. Um, so for now, what we're gonna do is, let's see. So right now, let's go in here and just get rid of this row column iteration. We're just gonna do cells and then do for each, and then just grab the row here and that is it.row, and column is it.column, and then we can actually just grab this whole thing and stick it in here. The reason we're doing this instead of just iterating over stuff is that, um, for example, at some point we might want to, or sorry, make this row column. Once we have starting cells, which is something that I almost added to the cell class, um, once we have starting cells, we're going to want to um, fill them based on that is starting cell boolean in there. And, and to do that, we need a reference to the cell. So it's easier just to iterate over and just grab the row and column and then fill it as necessary. Okay, so we've done fill cells, we've done draw lines. Now we wanna add something called draw text and we pass the canvas again. So in this function, um, let's go below the draw lines and make it fill text, uh, private fun, sorry, draw text. And this will take a canvas again and basically what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna draw the actual numbers onto the screen. So to do this, let's just iterate over our cells again. Um, cells dot for each. I guess I didn't really explain what the for each loop does. Basically what it does is it, it iterates over the cells and then the it value inside this block is the current cell. So it's gonna iterate over it again and then the it is, stands for iterator I think, um, or iterated or whatever it is. Um, is it, so for example, we did it.row. It's like whatever the current cell that it's iterating over, 
um, is in here. It's like an enhanced for loop, the ones where you do like for object O and then colon, like whatever, like some sort of uh, some sort of collection in Java. It's the same thing, just in Kotlin. Well, I don't know if it's exactly the same under the hood, but it functions in a similar way. Okay, so now we need to actually um, decide how to draw our string. And I've already done this, so we have value string is just going to be value, or sorry, it <laughs> it dot value dot to string. So we're going to say, okay, here's our value string, and then we need to do some sort of measurement on it. So we need a new variable called text bounds, and that's just a rectangle. And then what we want to do is, actually, we need to create some sort of um, paint for our text. This might change in the future. I haven't looked at how I did it before. Um, but for now, we're just going to create something, and then I'll change it in the next video. So it should be um, text paint, and that's going to be paint dot apply. And then we want to do style equals paint dot style dot fill and stroke. Oops, fill and stroke. And then our color will just be black for now. And I guess we need to set a text size too. Um, we'll try 24 to start and see if that works. I don't remember the exact dimensions that I used in uh, my original version. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to do uh, text paint dot get bounds, get text bounds. And we're going to pass in this value string. And then zero value string dot length to say the length of characters. And then we're going to put in text bounds. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to create some sort of rectangle that says, hey, this is like the boundaries of our actual piece of text. OK, so now we need to do something where we get the, um, the width of our text. And that's just going to be um, text paint dot measure text. And that will be value string. And then our text height is just going to be text bounds dot um, height. OK, so now we have a text width and a text height, so we can draw it in the center reliably. So now we want to do canvas dot draw text. And we're going to put in our value string. And then here's where the weird math comes in. Call dot cell, times cell size pixels um, plus cell size pixels divided by 2. So basically, we start at the very far left of the cell. We go to the middle because we added cell size pixels minus 2. And then we're going to subtract half of the text width off. So basically, what's this doing is it's putting the center of the piece of text in the center of the cell. And we actually do need to define um, our row to be it.row and our column to be it.column. OK, cool. And then next, we want to just go to a new line. Um, actually, yeah, here, new line. And then same thing, but with row. So row times cell size pixels plus cell size pixels divided by 2 minus text height divided by 2. And then we want to put in our text paint as our last thing. So basically, what we're doing, we put in this value string. Our x and y are just offset so that the center of the piece of text is in the center of the cell. And then that's really it. So I think that should be it, honestly. Um, we haven't hooked up the inputs yet, but let's run this and just see what happens. OK, so that's not going to work. <laughs> One small issue that I realized. We have to go back to the Sudoku game class here and then make sure you um, put in here cells live data dot post value and then put in board.cells here. Because nothing is ever going to get posted in the beginning, and we've only ever put the post command here in the handle input, which we haven't done yet. So um, nothing would happen. So if, let's just run this really quick and make sure that it does, in fact, work. OK, we can see now that we have, um, have some numbers in our cells. They're kind of small. <laughs> we'll fix that in the next video, since I'll be able to look at the actual sizing constraints. Um, so yeah, we can see now that we press something, nothing's going to happen. So let's just fix that really quick. It'll be the last thing we do. Um, so go to the Play Sudoku activity, and we're going to create our own um, uh, buttons list. And that's just going to be list of 
and then we just want to put one button, two button, three button, four button, five button, six button, seven button, eight button, nine button. Okay, so now we have a list of buttons. So this is just easier for us to do our um, on click listeners um, because we have them in a list now. So we just want to do buttons dot for each um, indexed. And I think it should be um, index button. And this is just a lambda. And then what we want to do here is basically we want to say, okay, when we press the button, so button dot set on click listener on click listener. When we press this button, we want to say Sudoku board view dot handle input. Sorry, not Sudoku board view. Um, view model dot Sudoku game dot handle input. And then we want to put in index plus one. So it's going to say, if the one, since the one button is in the zero place, it's going to push up a one. Since the nine button is in the eighth place, it should be pushing up a, push up a nine. So I'm just going to short shrink this down. Um, Okay, so let's run this and make sure it works. Um, and we get a little bit of an error here. <laughs> the issue is that um, this buttons thing is created before we actually create the buttons. So they're all null, I think. Um, so let's just put this down here after we do set content view. Actually, we can put this just in here. Why not? And let's run it again and make sure it works. Okay, guys, <laughs> this also won't work. Sorry for the little mistakes, but this should be equals equals negative one. Um, so <laughs> none of this code is being run because when selected call is not equal to a negative one, well, that's always the case when we selected a cell. So let's run this one last time and hopefully it works. And this is in the, um, sorry, I think we were in the Sudoku board view class. Go to the Sudoku game class and go to um, the handle input function and change this to equals equals negative one. So yeah. So guys, we can see that these do in fact change when we type things in, which is awesome. It's a little bit small. I know you probably can't see it very well, but hopefully it's working on your screen so you can. Um, we'll, we'll fix the font sizes, like I said, in the next video. So yeah, that's really it for this video. Um, sorry for all the little mistakes. It's <laughs> kind of hard to do li some live coding sometimes. Um, but anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to leave a like, a subscribe, leave comments if you have questions, and I'll see you in the next video when we talk about, um, we'll probably talk about starting cells that can't be edited and then also adding notes to our cells. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.